No Kobe Bryant PSA 10 rookie card should be selling for less than $1,000 right now. And I'll explain why. What's up, YouTube? My name is Josh, and this is Josh Unboxed. This is my first episode or my first video off of basketball cards. I used to do a lot of video game unboxings, but I've gone away from that and I have ventured into the sports card market, um, having been in it back when I was a kid. But let me explain why I think that no Kobe Bryant PSA 10 rookie card should be selling for less than a thousand dollars right now. And I attribute it to LeBron James basically. So I did a comparison between Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. Obviously there are two different types of players, but they are both all-time greats. Ever since that LeBron James rookie exquisite RPA sold for 1.8 million, a bunch of LeBron James cards, in particular Topps Chrome, seen saw a huge increase in its in its value. Now, obviously when a card increases, natural tendencies are to look at other cards uh, of that same player within that same year. So looking at that, I've noticed that I don't think any LeBron James rookie, aside from the Bazooka one, is selling for less than $1,000 as a PSA 10. Now, I'm applying that same logic to Kobe Bryant who is an all-time great, five championships, one hell of a player, and one that unfortunately passed away untimely. Um, and at the time, only a few rookie cards have reached the $1,000 threshold. Obviously the Topps Chrome, the Topps Base card, as well as the Fleer Ultra, the EX2000, and I believe the Bowman's Best is now reaching up there. And using this type of logic, I feel that no other rookie of Kobe Bryant should be going for less than a thousand dollars PSA 10 so why why do you why do I why do I think that and it's mainly because of LeBron James and also Michael Jordan so in the basketball card market I feel there are a few niches you know there's the Michael Jordan uh, market you know we have a bunch of people who collect Michael Jordan back from the 90s and then we have the LeBron James market of the people who collected in the 2000s now, where does that put Kobe Bryant? You know, unfortunately, Kobe Bryant is what I like to call in terms of uh, wrestling, uh, a transitional champion. So if you think about Kobe Bryant's career, he was drafted in 1996. And during 1996, Jordan was still the man. That's when he ran off his second three-peat. And then Jordan retired. And then that's when Kobe started winning. However, Kobe wasn't prime Kobe yet. Kobe was still with Shaq, and it was the Shaq uh, Shaq and Kobe Lakers that won those three straight championships By the time that Kobe and Shaq broke up and went their separate ways in comes LeBron James who there was a lot of hype on coming out of high school and Honestly, I think he was the reason that a lot of people came back into collecting So I like to use myself as an example. I collected basketball cards in the 90s and I left the hobby when Jordan retired. Now, I didn't jump back in with LeBron, but I assume that a lot of people my age left the hobby when Jordan retired. And when LeBron came back in, that's when a lot of people jumped back in. So where does that leave Kobe Bryant? So in that sense, Kobe Bryant doesn't really get that much appreciation in terms of the card market. And because of that, a lot of his cards were kind of thrown into the everyone else pile. Now I know Keenan Rivals from the High Upside Show had a podcast that said, there's LeBron James and then there's everyone else. Um, true to an extent, I feel there's the Michael Jordan market, there's the LeBron James market, and then there's everyone else. And unfortunately, Kobe Bryant falls within that everyone else. Now there are Kobe Bryant collectors out there, but in terms of his card market, it's not as big it doesn't have as big of a base as a Michael Jordan or a LeBron James. And using, using that reason, I feel that Kobe Bryant rookie cards are undervalued. And that's why I come out saying that no Kobe Bryant rookie PSA 10 should be going for less than $1,000 because I feel that those cards should be sold at $1,000 So when we make the comparisons to guys like Jordan and LeBron James. Granted that Michael Jordan only has that 1986 Fleer rookie that is considered as his true rookie, uh, whereas LeBron James has multiple rookie cards along the same lines as Kobe Bryant that has multiple rookie cards. But I feel that 
because LeBron James's market is so big, that caused his cards to have that big jump. And now a lot of people are looking back now as these new investors and new collectors are coming in, they're looking back in the past and they're realizing how great, you know, they're trying to figure out who else is a great player. Oh, Kobe Bryant is a great player. So now everyone's going back and looking into his cards and purchasing it. So it's only a matter of time, I feel, that the price points of his Skybox Premium, his Z-Force, his Stadium Club, his Fleer card, um, the Collector's Choice, Upper Deck, Hoops, UD, UD3, those cards, it's only a matter of time before they reach that price point. And once the PSA 10s start getting out of people's reach, then what makes the next jump? The PSA 9s. And we're seeing that with the Kobe Tops base, um, PSA 10 and PSA 9, and even trickling down to the PSA 8. Um, and I attribute that to the pop reports because all the pop reports, um, PSA pop reports show that this particular card has a low pop report. These Kobe Bryant cards tend to have a low pop report when compared to the Luka Doncic Prism card. Um, when I look at pop reports, I usually like to use the Luka card as a comparison because it's just so over wildly high, yet the cost of the card is still rising. And I have my thoughts on that, which I'll probably dive deeper into another video. But in this video, it's more mainly about Kobe Bryant and how I feel a lot of his rookie cards are undervalued. So don't be surprised if within the next couple of weeks, maybe even within the month, that these Kobe Bryant cards start jumping up. These are just my thoughts. Uh, these are just my opinions. Now, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. It's not trying to say, hey, everyone should buy into Kobe Bryant cards. Um, they shouldn't if you don't think that that they're undervalued. If you do think they're under they're valued, then there's a particular there's particularly a play in this. Now, I don't expect the Kobe Bryant cards to reach to the levels of LeBron James because uh, LeBron James just has a figure a much bigger uh, fan base and there's more demand when it comes to that. But it doesn't mean that Kobe Bryant a Kobe Bryant Skybox PSA 10 should be selling for six hundred dollars. Um, I think this should be going close to a thousand. So. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, or found some sort of value in what I'm talking about. Um, and if you did, you know, you can consider subscribing, hitting the thumbs up, or even the thumbs down if you disagree. Um, it really doesn't matter to me either way. Uh, for me, it's just more about getting myself out there and just talking about these things. So there's so many things that I see, so many trends that I'm, um, I'm uncovering, and I feel that I should, you know, share it with the world. Um, I'm going to go through this whole journey with you guys and I'm going to show you the plays I'm making, the cards I'm selling, the cards I'm buying, why I feel these cards um, deserve attention and to also try to find the other plays out there in the market. So with that being said, my name is Josh and this is Josh Unboxed and this is my basketball card talk. So. If you're a former subscriber to my video because you've been watching my video game unboxings, then I sad to say, you know, we're going in a different direction and you might want to consider unsubscribing because most likely the information that I'm going to be presenting moving forward probably won't apply to you. Now, if you're a new investor, new collector into the sports card market, um, you know, ho I hope to provide some value to you guys and hopefully you're able to learn. Um, I'm using everything as a learning experience. I just submitted one of my first PSA submissions uh, not too long ago, and I didn't do so well. And it's a learning it's a learning process. So um, everything's all learning. You can't succeed unless you fail. So hey, here I am putting myself out. Hopefully, I'm providing value. And with that being said, my name is Josh. This is Josh Unboxed, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Later.